Hey guys, it's Jim. How you doing? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And welcome to 2018. I've got a lot of things I'm going to do on my channel this year. Uh, lots of videos I want to work on and just things I want to demonstrate. And so thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Now, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe and follow along since uh, that'll allow you to keep up on all the things that I'll be doing. And uh, feel free to leave a comment on the video. Uh, like it if you like it, share it with your friends, that sort of thing. Anyway, this is a new series I'm starting and it's about creating uh, cityscapes in Luminar and how to edit them. And there's a lot of different aspects to cityscapes. I shoot them quite a bit because a lot of my travels take me to cities in different places. And frankly, it's one of my favorite subjects. I love shooting landscapes as much as anybody but I don't get to see them that much, to be honest. And so, um, however, I do see a lot of cities. And so I'm gonna uh, walk through a number of different photos and I'm starting with this one today. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so this is the skyline of New York City. I shot this from the top of the rock. It's a very common photo um, location, I guess, probably one of the most popular in New York. And you can see why, it's incredible. You've got, you know, the gorgeous, probably the, the obviously the most recognizable and you know, one of the most beautiful skylines in the world, but it's, uh, there's just so much going on that it's awesome. But as you can see, uh, it was late, it was kind of getting dark, and one of the problems is, is that, you know, you basically got half the photo that's sky that's kind of light. Uh, in fact, let me look at this information here. So um, I shot it at f6.3. So, you know, somewhat wide open, but it's a single exposure. It's not bracketed or anything like that. Well, let me rephrase that. I bracketed the photos. This is a single exposure. I'm not doing an HDR, but I do have some HDR uh, videos planned as well, just uh, as an aside. Anyway, um, what happens a lot of times is you have that uh, brighter sky and darker foreground. Same problem that you have in shooting landscapes. And so I wanna work through sort of fixing that. Um, well, not sorta, uh, fixing that. And also uh, creating kind of the look that I want in the photo. So I'm grabbing a few filters here. And I'm going to look at my notes to make sure I get all the right ones. And uh, there we go. So I'm going to use these filters to work through this photo. Now the first thing I'm going to do is use Accent AI. And I'm going to go pretty much all the way. I mean, if you look at it, it does an incredible job on the photo going from that to that. It does an incredibly good job of lightening the foreground without really brightening the sky at all. If you look at the sky, the sky looks much uh, the same as it did, but the foreground's way better. So. I love uh, Accent AI. I've I've seen people sort of make comments about it online that it's like cheating or you know it doesn't require any skill or something like that. I don't care uh, to be honest. I just like it. It's a good filter. It does a really good job. Um, and personally, I want tools that work for me and work quickly and easily because I don't want to spend all day working on a photo. It, you might not think that because I like to work on photos, uh, but I want to work on as many photos as I can. I'm not in a hurry, I wanna get it right, but I don't wanna waste you know, countless you know, precious minutes trying to do something when I can do a lot with one filter, so I'm a big fan. Uh, anyway, let me go ahead and move contrast up here in the tone filter, and I'm gonna bump up smart tone as well, because if uh, when you add the contrast, it does darken uh, that foreground quite a bit. And I'm gonna take the highlights down a ways as well, just to get a little bit of that light under control. So let me show you the before and the after, I think it's starting to come together. Um, now, this was a sunset, uh, really post sunset, really more of a blue hour, but I wanna bring back some of that sunset look and that warmth, and so that's what I'm gonna do with the brilliance and warmth filter. I'm gonna go a little bit on the vividness here, not a whole lot, but I'm gonna go quite a bit more on the warmth because I really wanna bring back that sort of golden hour kind of look, and if you look at the before, and now the after, not just the sky being warmer, but the lights on the city, um, I, I just think they look so much better, right? You go from that to that. I just think it really starts to pop, which I love. So um, that's that. Okay, color balance. One of my favorite filters, I've got a video, a few videos back about it, uh, or about it and uh, the curves uh, filter, but um, it's fabulous, it's super powerful. If you haven't used it, please check out that, uh, that video. Uh, but it's uh, it's really powerful. It gives you an incredible amount of control over the colors in your image, which is why I use it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start here with the shadows. I'm just gonna make the yellow and blue go a little bit that way. Um, and then with the midtones, I'm gonna stick with the cyan and the red. I'm gonna basically take in the midtones, 
uh, create more warmth. You can see that had an impact right there. So there's the before and the after of this filter so far, and I'm not finished. And now I'm gonna do a similar thing with the highlights, probably not quite as intense. Um, and there you go. So there's the before and there's the after. That had a huge impact, I think, on the colors. And it really did warm up the photo a lot, which I like um, a lot. And uh, you know, this is the look I'm going for, basically. So um, that's what I would do with color balance. Again, super powerful filter. Absolutely one of my probably top five. And um, if you're not familiar with it, experiment with it, watch my other video, but it's, it gives you incredible control over colors. And that's one of my favorite things about Luminar is using that tool to adjust colors. Okay, now we've got adjustable gradient. Uh, a very powerful filter allows you to separate the top from the bottom. You could just say set orientation and you can move this around and you know, kind of whatever way you want. You can adjust the zone, uh, sort of the gradient zone, and you can even rotate it if you'd like to. Um, I'm just gonna say done. I'm not really making hardly, uh, sorry, my nose is itching. Um, in Central Texas, we have cedar this time of year and it makes me sneeze and makes my nose itch, so sorry. Um, but adjustable gradient just it gives you a lot of power as well and, and allows you to separate the top from the bottom. It's a really powerful filter in skyline type photos like this because generally you have a pretty clear demarcation between what the top and the bottom of the photo are. Absolutely same with the landscape. I would use this filter and you'll see it in a future video. I'll use this filter on landscapes all day long because of its uh, flexibility. And so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna drop the exposure in the top because again, I'm just sort of controlling that light, bringing that down, but I'm gonna bring the warmth up a little bit. Again, I'm creating that, that warm sunset glow that I'm uh, wanting to accentuate in this photo. And I'm checking my notes here. In the bottom, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna bring the exposure value up because, you know, sort of, you know, not sort of, uh, sort of by definition, I guess, for lack of a better word, the bottom's gonna be darker, right? When you're, uh, unless you really expose for the bottom, but then you're gonna have a blown out sky. Uh, and I don't wanna do that. So the gradient is taken from that to that. I'm not quite done. I'm gonna add a little contrast here as well. Something about like that, because I wanna really make that, um, sort of intensity pop in that foreground. I think it really brings the city to life. That might be a little bit much and maybe give it a little bit of warmth as well. Let me show you the before and the after. I think we're getting kind of where I wanna be in terms of balancing the light. And I think the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this saturation and vibrance filter. And that is gonna allow me uh, to take down some of the saturation in that foreground all these changes that I've made have really bringing up the contrast always impacts colors. I brought up the vividness and all that sort of stuff. I did contrast here as well, not to mention in the bottom portion using the adjustable gradient. So it's really making the colors pop in the bottom of the photo, which is fine. I want that, but I don't want to overdo the saturation there. So I'm going to take the saturation down and I'm going to take that down uh, about 30 or something. So something about like that. Now, that's impacted the entire photo. So I'm just gonna use a brush. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm gonna use a gradient. Um, I'm gonna grab the brush on this filter. So I'm using a filter mask. If you're not familiar with the masking capabilities, look at my um, Luminar 2018 tutorial series. I think it's episode five, it's all about masking. It shows you how to use the brush, the radial, the gradient, and the luminosity mask. But I'm gonna use the gradient mask. And I'm just gonna click there, and you just click and drag to draw the gradient. Well, I'm gonna draw it from the bottom because that's the section of the photo I really care to have the, uh, you know, the majority of the impact on. And so I think something like that looks about right. And once you have that set, you can just say done. Let me show you the before. You can see the color is a bit more intense and vibrant there in the bottom. And after I've darkened, not darkened, uh, reduced the saturation a little bit, I'm gonna give back a tiny bit because I don't wanna lose all of that. And I think that's looking really good. Um, there's really only one more thing I would do, and that is go into the crop tool. And that's in the tools menu at the top. The photo's a little bit crooked. Um, I shot this with the 28 millimeter prime. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a wide angle view. So I've done that, and I wanna maybe apply a, uh, a crop as well. So I'm gonna try kind of a 16 by nine sort of cinematic crop. I think something about like that. I wanna get as much sky as I can. Uh, maybe not that much, and then lose a little bit of this foreground because like that building right there, 
it's a little bit draw draws my eye and it's not really interesting so i think i'll do that and just say done apply my crop and there you go so there's a final finished photo here's the before i mean wow right what a difference and there's the after so using the filters ai tone brilliance and warmth color balance was huge and the adjustable gradient and then you know decrease in saturation in the foreground allowed me to go from a fairly flat photo and in fact you might would go through your library and look at this and say eh really not that great i don't think i'm going to mess with it uh, but using the power of luminar you can do so much to it and really turn it into something that you're proud of um, and i love this photo it may be a little saturated for some and i totally get that if it is just add a new filter you can add saturation vibrance again and you can say well maybe i'll take the vibrance down a little bit and maybe take the saturation down a tiny bit as well maybe not that much you know just just to drop that so let me show you the before and the after it's a minor uh impact but you know recognizable if you're if you're paying close attention so that's my workflow the thing for me with cityscapes is really is uh, thinking in terms of that adjustable gradient. How do I manage the fact that the sky is brighter and the foreground or the bottom half of the photo is darker? And how do I want to bring the colors up and enhance them? And I used the adjustable gradient, the tone, AI, and uh, color balance to really do that, plus a little brilliance and warmth to give the whole thing some pop. And that's it, my friends. That's a workflow for this New York City skyline. I'll be back real soon with more workflow videos in this Cityscape series. So thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe, uh, like the video, leave a comment. Let me know what other kind of Cityscape shots you'd like me to edit. I've got a five or six different ideas, things I'm working through. But if you have other ideas, I'm willing to entertain them, assuming I have photos that uh, I've taken that I could use to illustrate whatever it is you're asking about. So thanks in advance for that. And... Um, I appreciate you watching very much. Hope your new year is off to a great start. Thanks again for watching and tuning in. I'll see you next time and adios. See you later.